Hello again, welcome. This is Ab at Time for Clocks. This episode is about Gilbert 1807 clocks. To begin, I was going through my electric clocks and I found this little one here. It's just a little clock, little desk clock, little turquoise. In fact, the model number is 1253. I was wondering what year this was from. So I did a little research and I found an advertisement. I printed it out here. By the way, this is for people that would open a savings account, a bank. They were giving these away as a free gift if you deposited $1,000 or more in the bank. And this ad is from 1957. So this is an extremely later Gilbert clock. I was looking to see if there were others like this clock on eBay. I didn't see anything. When you look up Gilbert electric clocks, I mean, less than a handful. I had less than a handful of uh, items come up. But underneath they have things with the Gilbert name in them. And what did I come across? Of course, you always see them. Gilbert 1807. This is a pendulum clock from the 1930s. I'm guessing 32, 1932, somewhere around there. And it does have the Art Deco influenced numerals here. They, they, they kind of have a fluid motion to them, if you look at them. They're a little bit, little bit different than other numerals that you see. I like them, and they had to. They tried to put a little Art Deco influenced design, but I was thinking, why did uh, clock and Gilbert wasn't the only one? Why did clock manufacturers, because Art Deco is so popular today, why didn't they have more blatant Art Deco style clocks? And some did. Some did have real nice modern looking clocks. And I think the reason is because they didn't want to alienate, the clock make makers did not want to alienate older customers. Because older customers, they like traditional things, they like older things. And if you give them something too modern looking, oh, I can't go, we don't go for that, it's too modern. We like, we like more traditional. So, clock makers in the 20s and 30s, and even early 40s, they had to try to market their clocks to the different segments of the population. The younger people, they love the modern uh, deco-influenced clocks. Older people, not so much, but if you have one that's half and half, has kind of a traditional style, yet with a slightly more modern looking number on it, they might tend to go for that more. So that's my theory. Because if, if they just had a modern looking clock right away with nothing traditional in it the older oh oh <laughs> you know how older people they just they wouldn't have anything to do with it and a significant portion of their customers would be lost that's my theory I got way off track 1807 that you see here on the dial Gilbert 1807 right there if you look on eBay at Gilbert Mantle Clocks and traditional humpback timbre clocks from Gilbert, they say 1807 on them, and they have several. Anyhow, they did not start putting that on their clock dials until the 1920s. The 1920s? Why didn't they put that on there before that? I'll get to that in a second. First, back to the eBay ads you'll always see them there'll be at least a couple an 1807 clock and they want crazy money for it when actually 
it's worth less than sixty dollars even in not running condition but because it says 1807 they think their clock is from 1807 it isn't what does that date mean some the the Gilbert clock company they were competing with other clock companies and to try to give them an edge they tried to appeal to all oh, our company is quite old in fact 1807 was the date that they were using to claim that's how long they've been in in business more or less I'm paraphrasing but William Lewis Gilbert who founded the Gilbert Clock Company you know when he was born 1806 so if 1807 was the year that the Gilbert Clock Company was founded it was when William Gilbert was one year old so that's a that is a big stretch anyhow it's interesting that before the 20s the Gilbert clocks did not have this 1807 on there what's one of the reasons well they knew that they weren't founded in 1807 maybe that was a reason but William Lewis Gilbert died in 1890 and if he wanted to appeal to how old his clock company was, he could e easily, just like the later company, ap 40 years after he died, they started doing this, but he never thought to do it in his lifetime to appeal to how old their, his company was. Why didn't he do that? I think it was because he was an honest person, that's why. And he had a lot of integrity. In fact, the more I read about William, Gilbert. Now some people say he would he would copy their designs, but all the clockmakers would see the models from each other's line and they would make variations similar, but not as to the point where they would infringe on patents and copyrights. But they were all doing that and it was fair game. But William Gilbert, when he died, I started trying to add it up and he he left more than 50% of his fortune to charity, to charitable organizations. It was it's really something. Anyhow, back to the 1807. I found this article in this uh, periodical, the Winstead Terse Tercentenarian, <laughs> Tercentenarian, the Winstead, from Winstead, Connecticut, and it's all about the history of their town there. Anyhow, they have this little article on William L. Gilbert Clock Company. And they mention that on the property where the Gilbert factory was in Winstead, Connecticut, which they claimed 1807 was their founding or alluded to it. Originally there was a uh, grain mill there, grain mill, and there was a flood in the river and it got washed away. Anyhow, the, the property in 1803 was purchased by Colonel Samuel and Captain Luther Hoadley who erected a small wooden clock factory about 1807. So they bought the property in 1803 and in 1807 uh, Samuel and Hoadley started making wooden clocks. Anyhow, further on in the the article we find out that the uh, successors to uh, Hoadley, uh, Mrs. Whiting, she uh, sold she sold the factory in 1841 to who? Lawrence Clark and William L. Gilbert. So Gilbert actually did not own the property until 1841. So when the Gilbert Clock Company in later years started claiming 1807, I think in the broadest sense of the term, all they could appeal to is the clocks were made at that location since 1807 but they didn't include but not by us <laughs> a little disingenuous there 
but so I, I just wanted to let people know you'll find these clocks all the time that say Gilbert 1807 and when you see that right away you know they are made after 1920 and that they're not from 1807 so I I hope maybe somebody has one on eBay and they're oh 1807 I'm gonna make a fortune these clocks are must be worth thousands sorry there was another article in the same Winstead Winstead Tercentenarian and by the way this uh, periodical was from 1935 they also had an article on William Gilbert the home that he established for orphan children the year before his death left him a hundred thousand dollars which was a great sum of money and a monthly or a yearly income of ten thousand to add to it and it talked about the huge work that he did with uh, in the community the prints really small on this I don't know if anyone wants to uh, to read that they can pause the video I don't know if the it's just gonna show up good enough to for you to read that but, but there it is yeah they cared and educated 200 children and they accepted students and I mean not students but children from other states as well that didn't have anyone to care for them so he did, he actually did a lot of good uh, William Gilbert did I will mention one more thing from the life of William Lewis Gilbert when he was 21 he was hired as a school teacher the next year they did not rehire him I guess he wanted to be a teacher and for one reason or another they did not want to hire him again the following year maybe that's what he wanted to do was his dream taken away the point is it was looking for work since now he didn't have work he went into partnership with his brother-in-law and that's when they went into clock making and and the rest was history but the point is and I know it's cliche that when one door closes another one opens so even though you want to do something in life that avenue is closed it forces you to look outside the box maybe where you didn't think about looking before and you might have success upon success in going that direction so sometimes in life don't always look at things as oh poor me and think of it as an opportunity well now what can I do so I just thought that was that was really neat because if he say they did hire him again as a school teacher and they wanted to keep him he would never have gone into clock making and all the Gilbert clocks and so forth and all the charitable uh, contributions and the endeavors that 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 he did would not have unfolded and he helped so many he helped countless lives thousands so uh, anyhow I thought that was interesting and thank you for watching and I hope everyone stays safe and we'll see you next time. All right. Bye.